so you can see that I'm doing all of my shading strokes in that same diagonal. We're going to move on to something really quite challenging. Welcome folks, it's me, Aaron the Artist. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of my daily drawing routine. I think it's good to do a little bit of loose sketching every single day, just to keep in the habit of drawing and to keep your muscle memory nice and sharp. I also just really enjoy doing this kind of very rough sketching where I'm not worried too much about how things turn out. Really I'm just focused on having a bit of fun and maybe learning a thing or two about drawing. I'm not overly focused on getting a really beautiful result like you might see me doing in those more highly rendered pieces that I sometimes do. Lately I've been focusing on drawing the head in all different angles. I wanted it to become much more natural, much easier, so that I could draw the head from any angle, more or less without thinking about it too much. I think at the moment it's quite difficult for me to draw certain angles, and so I've been drilling these kind of practices every day to see if I can improve things. Here you see one mistake that I'm quite prone to making. The distance between the two eyes should be one eye width, and I usually make it slightly too big. I find it really hard to judge that distance whilst also keeping the eyes at a reasonable size. I always end up using the lasso tool to edit things into the correct position. One thing that helps me a lot with this is drawing the eye sockets first before I draw the eyes, and that can help you a lot with figuring out what size the eyes should be and where to place them. But at the end of the day, there's only so much help that guidelines can give you. You sort of have to know where these things go intuitively if you're going to draw them from any angle, or if you're going to have an easy time with drawing. Guidelines can only get you so far, and of course they require you to be able to accurately draw the guidelines in the first place. And when you're just getting started with drawing, drawing guidelines can be pretty difficult. Speaking of guidelines, I struggled a lot early on when it came to drawing guidelines. Not because it's really hard to draw them, I mean, it is really hard to draw them, but what I struggled with more was the fact that sometimes I would need to adjust the drawing and come away from the guidelines. So you can see in this one that I initially drew the chin and the jaw much longer than it needed to be. And I also misjudged where the nose would sit, and a lot of those things need to change when I come to doing the final drawing. And that requires me to come away quite significantly from where I laid down the guidelines. I found that really hard when I was getting started because you don't necessarily have the confidence to deviate from guidelines once you put them down, especially if it took you a long time to get a set of nice guidelines. You don't necessarily want to ignore them. You want to use the hard work that you did, right? But I do think you can get a lot out of drawing if you're willing to approach it in a much more flexible way. If you look at a lot of really great artists, you can see that their approach to guidelines is just that, very flexible. They don't hang too much on the initial guidelines, they just use it to give them a rough idea of what's going to happen. This first one is pretty straightforward, just a nice front view just to ease into things. I'm going to add a little bit of shading now. Nothing too realistic, just something to add a little bit of dimension to the character. One thing I picked up looking at some great sketch artists is that if you're going to add some fairly rough shading, it can help to shade all of the lines in the same direction. So you can see that I'm doing all of my shading strokes in that same diagonal. That helps the piece feel sort of more held together and less messy. That's our first one done. Now for the next one, I'm still warming up a lot and feeling quite nervous, so I'm just going to try another front view, but maybe with a little bit more expression on the face. 
I do have some photo references that I'm using to help me make these drawings. Nothing too fancy though, just your standard photo references that you could find on Pinterest. The important thing that I find when I'm doing this kind of drawing routine though is I'm not trying to get an exact likeness of the photo reference. I'm not trying to do like a perfect study of the person that's in the photo. If you want to get a copy of someone's face, you can easily use a grid method or something like that, or use a traditional pencil and angle measuring technique. But here we're just using the Loomis method. And when I use the Loomis method, I don't go for exact likenesses. I don't think it's a tool that's well suited for drawing exact likenesses. I much prefer to use it to draw from photo references, but I'm using the photo more to inspire me in a certain direction. Maybe it can help me with the angle or with the hairstyle or to get certain proportions in the right place. That sort of thing. Let's try drawing some bigger, maybe slightly more anime type eyes. A lot of my art these days looks quite realistic or maybe not realistic but at least semi-realistic and I've moved quite a long way away from the anime style but let's try let's try something a little more stylized noses are a funny thing to draw without shading because they're such an odd shape they have so much dimension to them. I find that I always want to draw a circle on the top plane of the nose just to show that it's there, but I don't know, maybe that looks a little bit like a guideline or like I'm drawing a highlight. Maybe it looks weird, but I like it. When I sketch on my iPad, I use a brush called the Finoli Line Brush. It's nothing too fancy though, you can get basically the same result with a basic Procreate brush like the Procreate Pencil. Getting a good flow to the hair is much more important than drawing any specific hair strands. Even if the strands look a little bit messily drawn, the overall flow is what makes the hair feel alive. Ears are a bit strange, but let's not worry too much about that for these. Just get the second one in here real quick and then let's move away from them before they give me a headache. This character does feel much more stylized than the last one. Much more anime. I mean, it, she's not, you know, your traditional huge eye anime girl, but she's much more anime than the first girl that I drew, and certainly much more anime than any of the characters that I've drawn recently, so I'll take it. Getting a shadow underneath the neck can really help things pop.
I want most of the detail to be around the eyes, since that's where I want you really to spend most of your time looking. The photo reference has some freckles and I think it makes her look unique, so just want to put those in. Okay, I feel a little more confident now in what I can do, so let's try a slightly more complex angle. Let's do a nice classic three quarters view. If you draw the ear first when you do the three-quarter view, it can really help you figure out where the jaw needs to go. This part of the skull wraps around from the forehead down into the eye socket and then sticks back out again. But I didn't leave enough space for the forehead, so Gotta fix that. Just find those eye sockets again, but I noticed that I think the jaw is much too long, so I'm just gonna shorten that quickly with a selection tool. We are looking at this person from slightly underneath, so you see more of the underside of the nose. So you can see I drew this triangle here where you can see the bottom side of it. She's looking very ugly at the moment, and that's fine. We don't need to make her look pretty right from the start. I'm pretty happy to draw a kind of ugly version of the character and then once I know that all the shapes are in the right places, we can always pretty them up afterwards. But if the shapes are in the wrong place, it doesn't matter how pretty we make them, it'll still look funny. There we go, now we can focus on getting those nice shapes in. This eye is harder to draw because some of it gets hidden by the nose bridge and the other side of it gets smushed as the face moves back in perspective. Part of the problem is that the eyes are too high up, so I'm going to have to fix that in a second. We can keep the nose a bit simple, don't want to overstate it from this angle. I can never decide whether to do these drawing routines in my sketchbook or whether to do them on my iPad. It feels much more natural to do sketching on my sketchbook because you just get that raw pencil feel and it makes those nicer sounds and you get that texture. It just feels much more relaxing to me. But on the other hand, 
the iPad is nice because it allows you to resize things and move things around and make sure that they're in the right place. That can take a lot of the stress of drawing away and is one of the reasons why I draw so often on my iPad. The hardest part of any drawing, I think, is the initial stages where you lay down your structure and put the proportions in. Getting those things right is what determines essentially whether the drawing is going to be a success or not. Well, I suppose that and the composition. If you can get those things right, the rest of the drawing is kind of easy because it's just about drawing nice details. I think I spend most of my time for each drawing in the structure stage, getting the proportions right, getting those guidelines in, resizing things, using the liquify tool to move things around. I spend much less time drawing nice looking eyes and nice looking mouths and pretty hairstyles. All that sort of stuff is relatively simple compared to the act of getting all the proportions right and getting your perspective correct. I used to really overcomplicate drawing the facial features and rendering the facial features actually. I used to think that it had to be really complicated and that I needed to draw a whole bunch of different subtle lines in all these different places and drawing even just one face could take me an hour quite easily. I think that was because I thought that the more detail I put into a drawing the more likely it was to turn out good when, in fact, a lot of the prettiest drawings that I've ever seen are very simple and made of pretty simple lines. I really like how this one turned out. I think she looks really animated, the flow of the hair and the expression. I'm really happy with this one. Just get a little bit of shading in real quick and then we're going to move on to something really quite challenging. Okay, for the last one, we're going to do something that's really going to push my skills a little bit. We're going to be doing another angled view, but not exactly a three quarter view. It's more of a nine tenths view if that makes sense. I'm going to be drawing that awkward angle. I think a lot of people know what I'm talking about. That awkward angle that's almost a side view, where the character is almost on the side, but you can still see just that other eye poking out from the end. The nose looks like it's on side view and it sticks out quite a lot from the face, but then you can still see the other eye and the other eye socket. So it's almost a side view, but not quite. This is such a tricky angle to draw in my opinion and it really helps me out to put the nose in place early on and to show how it overlaps that eye socket straight away before we do anything else because the placement of the nose really determines the overall angle of the face and getting that right is going to set us up for success. You know, after all these years, I still don't really have any process or guidelines or structure for drawing the mouth. I still just make it up. I should probably look into that. You can see I'm taking things real slow with this one and making sure the structure's in the right place. I drew a few little beads in the eye sockets to show where the eyes would sit to make sure I'm getting them in the right angle. What I really like about the Loomis method is that if you master it, you really can use it to draw the head from any angle. This angle is particularly tricky for the Loomis method though, because you're really stretching your knowledge of perspective. 
you can see a lot more of the roundness of the eyeball here as the face starts to turn more into the side view. You can only see a little bit of that left corner of the eye right against the edge of the nose bridge. I tried to get the nose in the right place early on, but I still, I don't think I managed it. And I end up having to edit it here. I'm just sizing everything up here to try and make my edits fit with the initial guidelines that I drew. Because what I don't want is to lose the structure because I made one little mistake in it. I want to keep the rest of the structure that I drew, but just change the nose slightly. This looks much better, but you can see straight away that the right eye is way too far out. It's almost off on the side of her head now. So we're going to have to push it back towards the left so that it's closer to her nose. There we go. Now we're getting there. You can see in this drawing more clearly what I said earlier about being flexible with guidelines. So I spent a long time putting in those guidelines and understanding the structure of the face from this angle. But I still made quite a lot of mistakes and had to adjust things. But I can still use the structure that I put in place. I just have to keep in mind that things aren't going to be exactly like that. This hairstyle is pretty simple and I don't want to overcomplicate it with too many lines. It's time now to add that basic shading. I think this one will really come together nicely once we've got that shading in. She looks quite elegant or maybe a little bit royal. I like to do this kind of drawing exercise either in the morning or in the night before bed. Sometimes both if I get the time. I think it's really good practice just to keep yourself drawing and you can really learn a lot from just doing this kind of thing in a sketchbook or on a blank canvas on your iPad or your tablet or whatever it is that you've got. I really recommend this kind of thing to anybody who wants to get better at drawing. Anyway. Here are the four drawings that we did today. I'll see you next time. Good night.